a lot of things talked about on this channel are about living in the full expression of yourself finding your voice and using it to live out your life's full potential and to help others i found better ways to lead in my life by the power of my own voice and not just its tone or the frequency but the impact of storytelling just recently i've been hearing in the back of my mind experiencing the power of your voice is one thing but have you explored just how impactful your silence can become and i thought to myself hmm the impact of our voice and the impact of the spark of our own light is only supported or enhanced by the silence of the moment before like the instance before the big bang or the first note of your favorite song why is it as humans that we find more appreciation of the things that fuel us in the moments of its absence this intrigued me i wanted to dive into it more i wanted to find ways to embody this in my own life because as you can tell i don't know how to shut the up and when doing something like using your voice and creating dialogue about things that are important to you or to others has served you for so long, it's hard to kind of turn away from it and then on top of that, be good at it and see the value in it. So in this video, I will be talking about finding comfortability in the silence and the ways that it can be of benefit to us. Welcome to the Raw and a Half Podcast, where we get real and then some. I am your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will speak on different topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind so we can accomplish our goals from a healed and open place together. So let's get started. If you're wanting to build trust in the community that you're cultivating, or to calmly express the importance of your words, speak less and with more intention. I am a recovering, anxiously attached people pleaser. So a lot of the ways I communicated in the past were to keep the peace or keep people comfortable or just to be understood. This was all to make up for the many years where I felt completely misunderstood and without an audience who cared enough to even want to understand me. This still shows up in my life. When someone has obviously misunderstood me or my intentions, I take that as an opportunity to express myself more and in creative ways for that specific person. This never works. Because no matter what, people are going to have their own understanding of me. They're going to have their own ideas and their own biases that have absolutely nothing to do with me. And assuming that my one voice and who I am could be the difference in a person's entire life and their entire group of experiences, of course it would be great, but it very seldom happens. And I shouldn't put the responsibility of changing a person's heart on myself. I found that when I spoke more, I wanted to do it for other people's understanding, but majority of them felt like I was manipulating or persuading them, like I was some type of car salesman. Like for example, I know I'm watching a really good film when much is expressed without the pacifying of the dialogue. We think silence is an emptiness, but it's truly a space for the divine things we have no words to express to unfold. And if we use all of the words, all of the sounds, all of everything and none of ourselves to take up space, after a while, it's going to feel emptier and emptier. This is when caring too much serves absolutely no one. This is also a sign to stop and stay silent. This was a sign for me to operate out of trust. And here's how. We can't operate fully in our authenticity and please everyone. So when we do things 100% in our truth, that is also out of alignment with an entire community of people or just out of alignment with someone that you care a lot about. We have to trust that our truth is enough and that there needs no explanation. And if it results in 
moving away from one place to get closer to what is actually aligned with you, that was all supposed to happen. I felt that I was having to explain myself way more when I was wasting time and energy in spaces that I never belonged. I felt I was explaining myself more when I was in scenarios that triggered me back into existing in past versions of myself that didn't embody my own sense of belonging. And because I am in a place now where I do all things with intention and from my truth because I feel that sense of belonging in myself, I don't have to convince anyone of a truth that always will be mine no matter what. And when I'm silent, I carry a confidence in that validation of my own experience that I can wear like an armor. And not necessarily to go to war, but to be a representation that I am secure. It's like when you enter a palace and along the walls you see different suits of armor, they're completely empty, but what they represent is something so much more. You know, and I think we have those things inside of ourselves. Also, when I'm silent, I'm able to exist in an openness of things just coming and going in its natural order. When I'm silent, I'm strong and able to attract instead of where I was before, which was in a constant yearning of compliance and understanding. And when the confidence is no longer performative or routine, but something fully embodied, there may be more anticipation towards hearing me express myself because people outside of me can get a sense of that security that I was talking about before. It presents itself as an authority, and when a person has a sense of authority in their own life, it is a natural attraction to others that you don't necessarily have to force or sell. Sometimes when I'm speaking and I'm expressing myself, there's this never-endingness that I feel. And it's only because I like knowing that I'm being understood and I like people's ability to communicate that. But if I'm speaking to a camera and a microphone, there is no real reassurance that that's happening until after it's done. So there's a lot of trust that I have to have in this process through just doing the work and have a silent confidence that what I'm doing is enough. There is power in introspection. When I'm in a season of constantly speaking and focusing outward, rarely am I ever learning new things. I think a great way to combat the noise and the urge to always want to fill up the space of silence with something whether it be music, a podcast, videos, scrolling, is coming face to face with the discomfort and uneasiness that the silence brings you. For me, when I realized that the sounds of the world were all I heard and all I wanted to hear, so much that I was using the noise as an escape to my own introspection, it was a sign that there was something that I needed to unpack. When the truth of that thing is so raw, so honest, and so uncomfortable to face. Hearing a voice that is not my own gave me more comfort. This only serves as a temporary solution. The things that we carry that seem too uncomfortable to unpack does not take away from the fact that it still needs to be done. When we are close to facing things that will expand us spiritually and mentally, there is a resistance especially in a community of leaders and speakers in their own realms, we still need the time of silence and introspection to see ourselves from a bird's eye view, to better guide our choices, and in turn, making better judgments to serve the people we wish to serve. Honestly, it's not until I quiet myself enough to just look at my laptop and type out in my notes everything that I have inside that I'm able to really feel the fullness of who I am and sometimes I run away from it because it is just too much to have it's too much to express that sometimes or when I'm exhausted I feel like abandoning that part of myself is a lot easier some ways I feel reprieve from it and other ways I feel empty without it 
and I'm constantly playing this, you know, tug of war with my time and how I express myself, how I use it, how I rest, and how I choose to connect. When we're truly able to understand the concept of silence, we're able to reap the benefits of its power, like developing listening skills, deeper bonds and connections with the people around us, and the words we speak will carry more significance. And to piggyback off of my last point and just lay it out, I've learned a lot more by listening than I did while talking. I always know I'm making better use of my time when I'm using it to listen. And this is whether it was to hear a person's intentions, to hear their side of the story, to get the full scope of their perceptions of life, of me. I find I'm able to have a lot better relationships with people who are actively listening to understand as much as I am. And now I have better discernment, but I remember speaking with someone in my past and witnessing them say the same empty stories about how amazingly talented they were that when I reminded them of them repeating the story, I was offending them. It's when I'm speaking to a person who loves the sound of their own voice, it's much harder to actually grow in connection with them because they aren't silent enough to connect with anyone outside of themselves. In this journey I'm on as a YouTuber, it's obvious that I have to communicate to do the task, but if I'm not also taking the time outside to do the silent work and research on the audience that I want to try to cultivate and using the analytics, what good am I actually doing to this collective? When I started, I thought it was just making videos and expressing myself creatively, but a lot of the work is in the things that you all can't really see and you're not supposed to because that's really the research and understanding keywords and all of these things that are another journey within itself but that's what makes the most impact on its ability to reach you is if I actually do that work and if I put majority of the effort into the things that I say, but also not an equal effort in being silent enough to be aware of the importance of that, um, I don't know if I would be able to grow as much as I want to. I think that is all that I have for today. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing and to making it to this far in the video. But I'm really curious, especially if you're a woman, what are ways that your silence or learning to become more silent has benefited you? I mean, has benefited you more than over explaining, over sharing, over doing and playing your role in other people's lives? I wanted to talk about how the power of silence in relationships is a powerful tool as well, but sometimes it's just really hard to get to. Um, but if you're looking for a part two and you're interested in speaking about that or having dialogue about that, please let me know in the comments below because I kind of want to get there, but I don't know. Um, yeah, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri. And if you have Spotify, download the Raw and Half podcast with Jasmine Siri. That is pretty much it. I hope to see you all in my next one.